Welcome to Second Recapped. At the beginning of the movie, a famous boxer named Young, he will shortly turn 17, he is already well known in national level boxing competitions. He is eager to get home one night after a big victory. His mother and sister are working feverishly to get him to see the surprise they have in store. But when Young gets home, he discovers them bloody on the ground. Someone tries to kill him and attacks him from behind. However, because Young is a good fighter, he turns his rage on the murderer and beats him to death. The setting changes to a secondary school two years later. Some males are watching the news as it pertains to Young's detention. He killed robbers, but because he utilized his boxing prowess on them, it was viewed as an attack rather than self-defense. The adolescent was consequently jailed for murder. A timid and reserved youngster named Subin is seated in front of the class. He was socially nervous because of the severe bullying he endured in his former school. However, after relocating into this one, he has met a few new pals and is regaining control of his life. The teacher arrives and introduces a new student to the class. He is a boxer named Tony who is the main bully at Subin's former school. Subin shakes in fear at the sight of Tony. All the terrible memories of him crouching down in the dark come back to him. When the teacher is not around to show his superiority, Tony beats up the prior bullies. Additionally, he greets Subin before randomly starting to attack him. When a female speaks out for Subin, the bully is pushed away. Tony then strikes her back in kind. Subin stops him for the first time in his life and begs him to leave her. He immediately regrets it because Tony will now definitely teach him a lesson. Subin picks up a ballpoint pen off the ground and uses it to protect himself. In a fit of rage, Subin stabs Tony in the eye after Tony challenges him to use it. The next scene shows Subin in court facing an attempted murder charge. He is found guilty and given a two-year prison term because he is too afraid to speak out against the bully. The unfortunate child is then taken into custody and forced to board a bus with other juvenile offenders. He happens to sit next to Young and gains his favor. All newcomers are finally assigned to their appropriate cells. Subin becomes pals with Min, a thief. They are both placed in the same cell, where a man explains the order of the prisoners. Three primary figures are in charge, Jun, Akio, and Han. Jun is the decent person who intervenes to stop Akio and Han from arbitrarily attacking people. However, recently Akio and Han conspired against him and deceived the guards into placing him in solitary confinement. Since then, they have been in charge of the prison, directing other prisoners' movements, and brutalizing anybody they choose. However, everyone respects Yong, who is the prison's top dog. He keeps to himself and avoids conflict unless someone provokes him. Because he is the best boxer among the inmates, Akio and Han are also afraid of him. On their first day in prison, Min and Subin are watching a football match between Akio, Han, and their teams. When two players get hurt, Han asks the duo to join the game. They do not want to get into any trouble so they simply join him in the field. Subin hardly moves which causes Han's team to slack. Scared of being punished, he closes his eyes to kick the ball but accidentally hits Akio in the nuts. The bully falls to the ground in pain and is enraged. After recovering, Akio and his minions drag Subin to a secluded area. This reminds him of the time the same thing happened to him at school. He trembles in fear, cries, and begs but no one listens. They suddenly come across Young and behave normally. Subin learns from this that even the bullies are terrified of him. He rushes to Young and begs for assistance when their hold on him begins to loosen. Young prefers to keep to himself most of the time, but when he sees Subin begging, he chooses to assist him. When Akio attempts to retaliate, he gets pounded once to the ground. Subin is surprised since he's never seen anybody that fearless. In the prison, offenders receive education as well. Since he can't oppose Young, Akio keeps glancing at Subin during class and is determined to teach him a lesson. Subin is abruptly asked to go outside to meet a guest by a security guard. None other than Tony is the visitor. His boxing career was also finished because he has lost all vision in the eye he was stabbed. He was also expelled from school and is currently living on the streets without any money. He wants Subin to be released from prison because he is the fault for everything. On the other hand, Subin begs for his pardon while making numerous excuses. Although Tony is adamant about killing the bully one day, he is deathly afraid of facing him once more. The following day, Subin observes Young exercising outside through the window while they are in class. This makes him realize he has two years to train if he doesn't want to be killed by Tony. During recess, he goes to Young and requests him to teach him self-defense. Initially, Young refuses, afraid that Subin will use the knowledge to be a bully like the others. But Subin explains that he is tired of always being the victim. He is at his breaking point and can no longer run from his fears. The comet makes Young learn that Subin is only a helpless kid. He knows how it is like to be on the receiving end which means he won't misuse his strength if trained. Still, to test his endurance, Subin asks him to run a hundred laps in forty minutes. Only if he is capable of doing so will the training begin. Subin, who is unaccustomed to jogging, begins to do so out of a desire to establish his worth. While he's at it, he recalls how Tony and his crew battered him and ridiculed him. 
As they continue to kick him, he used to urinate in his pants out of fear. He finds the motivation to carry on when he considers himself in that situation once more. He had been clearly having trouble for the last few laps. Subin runs all 100 laps against Yang's request for him to stop and screams in anger. He collapses shortly after and needs Yang's assistance. The boxer now realizes how much Subin needs assistance. As a result, he requests to be moved to his cell from the prison warden. The man admires Yang because of all of his boxing matches and is aware of his good character. As a result, he and Subin are permitted to share a cell. The next scene shows Yong getting Subin ready for the first day of training. He is ordered to perform a few push-ups, but Yong sighs because of his terrible form. He realizes that the child requires a lot of patience from him. In the meantime, Akio is also training and planning to get his hands on Subin when he is not with his boxer bodyguard. His minions say that they should target men because he used to be friends with Subin. If he can bring Subin away from Yong, they can finally get their way with him. Somewhere else, upon seeing that Subin cannot even do a pull-up, Yong asks him how he has been living life with such a weak body. Subin, in turn, claims that he is too tired and wants to rest. Yong almost questions if he made a mistake by agreeing to train him. He makes it obvious that Subin will be returned to his cell if he chooses to take the simple route out. Subin is reminded of his motivation for working out by this, and he keeps attempting to complete the pull-ups. The amount of reps increases every day, and Subin finds it difficult to keep up. He believes he is working out excessively, but not until he starts to notice physical changes in his physique. It's around this period that he and Yong truly become friends. Tony routinely engages into confrontations with the local thugs outside the prison. When he defeats a large group of men by himself one night, a gangster notices him. He offers Tony a spot in his gang and a lot of money after being impressed by the youngster's abilities. Tony initially declines since he doesn't want to serve as a pawn. He even insults the mobster, which results in a slap. He is given one final opportunity to join his gang, where he will receive training while still being hired. Tony accepts and begins working with him. Min and Subin share lunch together the next day in jail. We learn from their conversation that Yong will be sent to an adult prison when he turns 18. Subin needs to be extremely cautious with Akio since after he leaves, no one will be there to protect him. Subin is myth that Yong failed to inform him because he had no information about this. Later, he queries Yong as to whether he is really leaving the facility. Yong agrees and advises him to put more effort into training. It was inevitable that Subin would be living alone at some point, so starting now would be preferable. Meanwhile, Two of Akio's henchmen are harassing men. They start to hit him, but Subin stops them in the middle. When he speaks to the men, they motion for him to look down. They assault Subin when he refuses, but this time he can fight himself with ease. Akio learns what happened later and becomes enraged, becoming red. He orders his servants to find a means to bring Subin to him. The minions implore Subin to assist them since they are terrified of both parties. He agrees and shows up at Akio's covert location. Subin kneels down and begs for pardon for assaulting his people before the thug has a chance to speak. He also explains that they hit men first which is the only reason he was defending himself. The apology does nothing but infuriates Akio even more. After that, a fight starts between the two, and Subin's progress is evident in his punches. They match in skill and strength but in the end, Akio knocks him out. Subin is lying on the ground, completely beaten and tired. Everyone thinks the fight is over but that is until he stands up and gets ready for round two. He instantly gets an upper hand and throws continuous punches at the opponent. The fight only stops when Yong arrives and stops him. They walk away with pride making sure no one else messes with Yong again. Tony has been acknowledged as a street fighter in the interim. He discovers the brutal methods used by gangs and is content that he has been given the chance to pursue his passions. The next scene shows Subin and Yong practicing one more time. Subin almost succeeds in punching Yong in the face. Finally, the training is finished, and Yong is ready to move out. Yong queries Subin about his knowledge of sharks before departing. He goes on to explain why a shark must constantly keep moving in order to avoid sinking if it were to stop. He bids farewell after telling Subin to act like a shark. Jun is released from his isolation after his departure. The bullying is likely to stop when he is around. Han challenges Subin to a fight that day. Subin pledges to avoid bothering inmates going forward if he wins. For the contest, they agree to meet in five days behind the warehouse. Tony shows up during this interval to meet Subin. He is aware of the rumor regarding Subin's training and the increase in his strength over the previous 12 months. He is excited rather than frightened since the conflict between the two will be more entertaining. Subin and Han are seen fighting in the next scene in full view of everyone. Even Han doesn't endure long against Subin's willpower, 
Despite their equal competence, they are eventually discovered by the guards, who then place them in solitary confinement. They are issued a few days later. Han concedes defeat and makes good on his promise to never harm anyone. All the leaders eventually start getting along. In the prison, there are no longer any fights, and everyone gets along. Another individual like Subin is being trained by Yong somewhere else. When he is about to give up, Yong inspires him by using Subin as an example. Subin can now be released when two years have passed. Tony is waiting outside to give him one last lesson. Subin questions him about why he despises him so much, but he doesn't respond. As the last fight begins, the two find it difficult to land a single blow on one another. Soon, Tony gains the upper hand and repeatedly strikes him, just like they did in school. Subin remembers Yang's shark phrase when he is at his lowest and gets up. He fights the bully with newfound vigor and subdues him with a unique punch that Yang had taught him. Then he turns around and leaves Tony hurt behind. Subin visits Yong in jail in the last scene. He apparently observed a shark taking a nap and is now beginning to doubt his theory regarding them. The two chuckle as Yong claims that the shark must have been dead. The movie ends here. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.